space has truly earned its moniker as the final frontier, stretching in all directions with rules of gravity and physics that do not apply on Earth. The possibilities for what might lie beyond our comprehension are endless. Some things that occur are so strange that it seems that the only explanation is one that involves aliens and other life forms. But most are none other than marvels of science that have never been seen on our small planet. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at instances of space marvels so unexpected that they even surprised scientists. Scientists accidentally discover huge galactic structure in space. Astronomers have made a fantastic yet accidental celestial discovery. Ron Allen, a physics and astronomy professor at Johns Hopkins University, alongside a team of astronomers, accidentally discovered a galactic structure made from gas and dust. This gigantic structure extends through the disk of the Milky Way galaxy and possibly beyond. Since discoveries like this are so rare, the group barely believed it at first. But since then, more observations have confirmed the structure's existence. The pathway to this discovery was marked with changes in how celestial bodies are observed. Originally, when astronomers would talk about the term vacuum of space, it was defined as the empty space between celestial bodies. Now, astronomers are realizing that space is not actually empty, but is instead filled with a dust and gas mixture called interstellar medium. The gas in the interstellar medium is mainly composed of hydrogen. Hydrogen is essentially invisible to astronomers, so they must decipher the existence of hydrogen placements in space by tracking other gases like carbon monoxide or hydroxyl gas. These gases are called tracers. Allen collaborated with Dave Hogg of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and Johns Hopkins University PhD students Philip Engelk and Michael Bush to use tracers to eventually reveal the existence of the newfound galactic structure. At first, the team thought the structure was a marker or feature of the Green Bank Telescope that they used for their research. Engelk commented, to be even more sure, we tried several different independent signal processing techniques on the GBT and 20-meter results to attempt to remove the feature, but none of these methods managed to remove it. After another 100 hours of research, the astronomers were confident the structure was real. This finding could affect how we understand certain theories about the formation of stars and interstellar medium structure. It also reveals that molecular gas played a significant role in the birth of the Milky Way galaxy. Unfortunately, Allen passed away in 2020 while the research was still in draft form, but his discovery will continue to help us understand our galaxy's complexities. PhD student Michael Bush said, Ron was an incredible mentor, a brilliant astronomer and a great friend to me. I will miss him dearly. 100,000 star nurseries mapped Stellar nurseries, the areas of space which give birth to millions of stars in the universe, might be a little different to what scientists have previously believed. With a revolutionary type of survey, physics at high angular resolution in nearby galaxies, or FANGs, researchers have been able to chart over 100,000 stellar nurseries across 90 galaxies. And it is thanks to this brand new type of survey that we are beginning to learn that these nurseries are much more complex than we thought. The early stages of a star's life last over the span of tens of millions of years. Over that massive length of time, the plumes of gas and space debris slowly build to create what are known as protostars. This is the stage before a star is truly formed. Then these protostars begin to change slowly turning into massive depositories of plasma, which is fueled by fusion, just like our very own sun. But now we know that this process, and how fast and efficient it really is, depends entirely on each individual stellar nursery. We used to think that all stellar nurseries across every galaxy must look more or less the same, but this survey has revealed that this is not the case, and stellar nurseries change from place to place, Lead author Adam Leroy from The Ohio State University said of the research. These nurseries are responsible for building galaxies and making planets, and they're just an essential part in the story of how we got here. 
The survey took five years to complete and focused its view on the parts of the universe closest to the Milky Way. With the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, radio telescope located in Chile's Atacama Desert, the astronomers were able to focus on the fledgling formations of protostars caused by dust and gas. To understand how stars form, we need to link the birth of a single star back to its place in the universe. It's like linking a person to their home, neighborhood, city, and region. If a galaxy represents a city, then the neighborhood is the spiral arm, the house the star-forming unit, and nearby galaxies are neighboring cities in the region," said Fang's principal investigator, Eva Shinnera. These observations have taught us that the neighborhood has small but pronounced effects on where and how many stars are born. Clouds in the dense central regions of galaxies tend to be more massive, denser, and more turbulent than clouds that reside in the quiet outskirts of a galaxy," said co-author Annie Hughes, an astronomer at La Institut de Roche en Astrophysique et Planetologie. The life cycle of clouds also depends on their environment, how fast a cloud forms stars, and the process that ultimately destroys the cloud both seem to depend on where the cloud lives. With all this new data, astronomers hope that it could lead to a better understanding of how many different stars form, including our very own Sun, and that it may lead us to discovering more about our early solar system. This is the first time we have gotten a clear view of the population of stellar nurseries across the whole nearby universe. In that sense, it's a big step towards understanding where we come from. While we now know that stellar nurseries vary from place to place, we still do not know why or how these variations affect the stars and planets formed. These are questions that we hope to answer in the near future. Scientists find strange blobs on Uranus As with many planets and processes in space, Uranus has an unexplained phenomenon that has been confusing scientists. The planet's atmosphere is abundant in gases, including, for example, methane, but no ammonia has been observed. The same is true of Neptune. Now, however, scientists think they may have cracked the code. On the surface of Uranus and Neptune, a number of strange blobs, described as mushy, have been observed. The blobs, which are being referred to as mush balls, appear to contain large volumes of gas. These mush balls are slushy, and according to a press release on the research, are made with ammonia and water. The so-called mush balls can also be referred to as hail balls, as they have been likened in physical appearance to a large, muddy hailstone. Some have theorized that the peculiar mush balls could be why astronomers cannot detect ammonia in the atmosphere. If the ammonia is restricted to solely the mush balls, then the gas could be present without being detected. Jupiter is another planet that seems to house some mush balls. Here, however, scientists have observed a different trend. On Jupiter, the mush balls transport the ammonia into the atmosphere, where clouds form, preventing detection of the gas. The catch here is that ammonia is then detected much deeper into the atmosphere than when we expect could naturally occur. Tristan Gulo, a planetary scientist whose team presented their mushball study at the Europlanet Science Congress 2021, explained that we have gained this information thanks to the Juno spacecraft. He stated, The Juno spacecraft has shown that in Jupiter, ammonia is present in abundance, but generally much deeper than expected thanks to the formation of mushballs. Scientists hope that by studying other planets, such as Jupiter, we will be able to gain more answers regarding Uranus and Neptune, though we still do not know much about Neptune and Uranus compared to other planets in our solar system. Neither planet has been explored or visited since 1989, when NASA's Voyager 2 mission flew past the two mysterious planets. We can continue to develop our technology on the ground and conduct research from here on Earth, Though the results are not quite the same as the high-tech outer space technology we are seeing in spacecrafts like Juno exploring Jupiter. Hopefully, over the coming decades, we will be able to unravel precisely what is happening on Uranus and Neptune, though for now, we will be taking educated guesses as to what the mushballs are specifically doing. As we develop our technology and conduct new and wider observations, we grow closer to exploring space and the future. However, uncovering markings and evidence of just how we lost ancient cities 
reminds us that there is still so much to learn from our past. Elon Musk's first human colony on Mars would have to survive on a vegan diet. It could not be anything more like a movie. Elon Musk recently announced that future Martians will survive by growing their own food in solar-powered hydroponic glass dome farms. As a result, meat will not be on the menu, and these first people on Mars will have to survive on a completely vegan diet. Musk does say, at least for the moment, that it will likely only be the first 100 people on Mars who are limited to fully vegan cuisine owing simply to the extremely high levels of power which will be required to run and maintain the self-sustaining farms, combined with the obviously limited resources. For example, a study written by John Strickland from the National Space Society outlined the fact that you would halve the number of people domes could sustain if they also required meat and fish compared to a vegan diet. Similarly, it is also thought that if people did stick to a plant-only diet, a 0.3-square-mile farm with four levels to it could feed a colony of approximately 5,000. However, Musk does not foresee glass domes being the story of life on Mars forever, and rather suggests them to be a form of temporary habitats for the first cohort of people to help develop more permanent infrastructure on the Red Planet. With Starship, the Mars rocket, looking highly likely to be ready for its first test orbit sometime this year, the possibility of life on Mars is becoming increasingly real. Therefore, preparing for other logistical details, such as how to then survive once you have reached Mars, will be the next groundbreaking research needed in the field to continue expanding our horizons, quite literally. Plans for life on Mars are wide and varied. China, United States, and the United Arab Emirates all have plans to succeed at cracking human travel to Mars by 2040 and the UAE has gone so far as to plan future civilization on the Red Planet. However, Musk is currently making headway and has the most aggressive plan, aiming to get a human crew to Mars by 2026 and an established thriving city by 2050. With international involvement creating even more competition and incentive to be the first to Mars and first to facilitate life on Mars too. The oldest black hole in the universe. Many celestial bodies in the universe are old, but when scientists in 2017 realized they had found what could be one of the oldest black holes in the universe, they were understandably ecstatic. The black hole, ULAS J1342 0928, has a name just as big as its size. Astronomers were flabbergasted to find that the black hole, located millions of light years away, had a mass that's more than 800 million times larger than that of our Sun. Even more amazingly, the gigantic black hole reached this mass when the universe was only at 5% of its current age. The gargantuan ULAS black hole first came into creation a mere 690 million years after the Big Bang a very short time in the relative time of the universe. The discovery of such a massive celestial body may teach us more about black holes and their massive sizes. This may shine a light on how the conditions of the early universe changed to what they currently are today. The black hole is also paired with a nearby quasar, and the bright display of light also takes a new record for the furthest discovered quasar. The record used to belong to ULAS J1120-0641, which is a distant 13.04 billion light-years from us and came into existence around 750 million years after the Big Bang. It's believed that at the centre of most, if not all, galaxies lies a supermassive black hole. These black holes are much larger than their standard-sized namesakes and can reach anywhere from millions to billion times the mass of our Sun. Studies in the past have developed the idea that these massive space vacuums create huge displays of light as they devour local stars and other matter. These events are believed to create what we know as quasars, which are some of the brightest objects in the known universe. Because of their incredible brightness, researchers and astronomers are able to pick up and detect quasar activity 
from some of the farthest points in the known universe, meaning they are some of the most distant objects we know that exist. Quasars that are further away are much older in age, and the older and further a quasar is, the longer it takes for the light to travel to Earth. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.